air. We're off air, and we're on air. Well, howdy do, buckaroos. This is Tom the Beer Whisperer. And, and this is Jeff here. from NEBR. Yeah, I am here with Jeff from NEBR, New England Brew, Brew, New England Beer Reviews or Brew Reviews? New England Beer Reviews. But New England think Beer NEBR, Reviews. You can almost think of it, if you say it quick enough, it says any beer. There you go. So Jeff and I, we, we've been uh, kind of social media friends for several years, mostly about the beer, but about, uh, I don't know, just shy of a year ago, though, uh, you, you and I started a whiskey group uh, on, a, on a social media site together called Drinking Whiskey. We did. And, uh, you know, you're the, one who's the, you're the one who's the mentor to me when it comes to whiskey, because uh, whiskey is something I've only come to in the last year or two. And, uh, and you've been doing it a lot longer than that. And I think you have quite a, a nose and knowledge of the whiskey of, of whiskey and scotch and, and those kind of hard liquors. So I've actually watched a lot of your videos and I've learned a lot from you just watching your videos when you do those reviews on the different whiskeys and scotches that you do. And so I'm, I'm getting so into we'll, a bit. So you're drinking beer and I'm so drinking whiskey. Well, actually, I have both. What makes you? What, what made you want to get more to the whiskey side of things? I don't know. It's just I've never been really a hard liquor person in all my life. I mean, you know, when it comes to wine, I'll drink like you know, white Zinfandel. It's like the wimpy wine. But you know, it's one of those things that uh, I don't know. I just I, I we, New Hampshire. There's a lot. I I started picking up some of the nipper bottles. You know, the little one dollar, two dollar sampler, one ounce beer uh, whiskeys and scotches. And I've been trying a bunch of different ones. And, you know, I've actually found it to be much more enjoyable than I thought it was. And what I've really enjoyed about the whiskey is that when I drink too much beer, I have a hard time sleeping at night. It gets me all kind of fired up. But when I drink the whiskey, I find it more relaxing and easy to kind of drink slowly and kind of enjoy and consume and just, you know, you know smell it and taste it and let it kind of, it takes, it takes me a half hour, 45 minutes to get through a little glass of whiskey, you know like a beer which might take me a lot less than that and so i find myself being able to enjoy the flavors and, and everything that goes with that and it doesn't doesn't really impact my uh sleeping habits or anything like that you know there you go uh, you know for me i mean uh you know i, I won't get into actual age but i've been drinking whiskey <laughs> since i've been old enough to drink yep. uh, maybe a yep. little bit before but uh yeah, i started as a bourbon drinker because well like most drinkers that's what my dad drank yep. so you usually start drinking what you're you know you what you see or what your parents drink yes uh, at the time there wasn't a lot of bourbons available to be honest with you um you had you had Jim Beam and Wild Turkey, which are bourbons, and then you had Jack Daniels available, which was uh, more of a sour mash or a Tennessee whiskey, um, and those were what was available. That's what my dad drank mostly. Mm. Uh, but uh, I mean, today's bourbons are completely different. I'm drinking some Irish whiskey now. This is famous in cask mates. Yeah. This is famous in whiskey aged in stout barrels, so I'm kind of combining beer and whiskey here. Well, the thing with me is that my heritage is Irish. The name Lyons goes back to Ireland, and my last name, and um, and my great 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 grandfather six generations ago came over to the U.S. from Ireland. So it seems like Irish whiskey should be something I would probably drink more of. And um, and I actually that's what I tend to when I drink whiskey I tend to go for the Irish stuff. I bought a Canadian club recently because um, I'm near and I'm in New Hampshire, and so we get a lot of access to Canadian uh, liquors and whatnot because we're so close. So I can see a lot of Canadian club and, and Canadian mist and things like that around here, you know. So, but I've been trying to get more into the Irish, although this is the Knob Creek maple, smoked maple, which, you know, so, and I've been enjoying that. Yeah, my heritage is Irish as well. Um, my last name is Mulvihill, which is very Irish. So, yeah, uh, my, it was my great grandfather that came over from Ireland. Yeah. My, they, I, I've got this uh, poster that hangs on my wall. To enter a pub run by the Lions is one of the best pubs in Ireland. That's what well, there you go. <laughs> so, but, you know, I mean, whiskey, and, and I, I've tried a little scotch. I, you know, I've done some bourbon. Um, when I used to be married, uh, my former wife used to be a big fan of the, uh, of the uh, what is it, uh, the Baileys, Baileys, those kind of sweet yeah. liquors, 
and you know I like those, all right. They're, but they're, they're so sweet. So, but I can drink those. I find those to be a little easier sometimes. The Irish, the Irish uh, liqueurs like that, the Bailey's, and there's some others that come out. But you know, I've, so I do those, do those every now and then. But I've really kind of enjoyed this uh, Knob Creek one, and it wasn't very expensive. So I'm going to have to look more for some of this maple influenced whiskey. Uh, and I, you know, I, I'm I'm going to. People who are watching this right now are going to think I'm a real dud when it comes to whiskey because I just don't know a lot about it. But, and you're the expert, but uh, you know I'll do my best. To, you know, just don't don't throw things don't throw things at me if you don't. If I sound like I'm. <laughs> well, you know, I don't I don't consider myself an expert. I'm just it's a guy that enjoys whiskey. There there are some experts out there. There are guys that write books. I'm not one of those. I'm just a guy that's been drinking whiskey for thirty something years. Yeah. So I, it's one of these, you know, so I'm, I also have, a, I, I, here in New Hampshire, we're very lucky because I don't know if it's lucky or depends on your viewpoint, but New Hampshire, the whole, the uh, state liquor, the liquor stores are run by the state, New Hampshire, state of New Hampshire liquor commission. So all of the liquor stores are state run stores, state run retail stores, and they get the uh -huh. prices. And in fact, that's one of the biggest things you see because we get a lot of people from Vermont, Massachusetts, and Maine who sneak over the border just to go to our liquor stores because they can save a significant amount of money on the liquor. As a matter of fact, those that live free and die state acti you know, attitude, we've got liquor stores that are located right on the interstate. You know, you get off, you pull off an exit, pull off a rest area, and you got a liquor store there, and you're driving up the interstate. It's always been one of those right. ironic things that you're supposed to not drink and drive, but you can pull off Interstate 93 <laughs> and hooks it in New Hampshire and walk away with cases of liquor. <laughs> You're just not supposed to drink in the car. True, true, true. So New Hampshire, you know, so our prices here are usually pretty good, and um, and I know our liquor stores do really, really well uh, because the prices are quite good. And uh, you know, I, I, and, I mean, I, th I can't remember what I bought this Knob Creek for, but I think it was could have been it was under thirty dollars. I know that for the for the one I bought, it wasn't. A, it was a slightly larger. wasn't one of the small ones like you had. It was a. Yeah, it was a you know it was a slightly larger container, so a jar of it, a glass of it. So, but uh, a lot of these Knob nipper Creek bottles. Bourbon. I, I bought a deal with Knob Creek bourbon. It was twenty nine eighty one at Sam's, uh, mm -hmm. and it came with two Knob Creek glasses. Now oh. the small bottle you saw me have was part of a three bottle set of the small bottles. It was five seventy one, and it came with a shot glass. So that was a pretty good deal too. Yeah, I mean I I like those over the. Back a few weeks ago, I can't remember what I bought, but I bought a four pack. What was it? I can't remember. It was a four pack of different uh, whiskeys. It might have been scotch. And it was only like $29 for these four little bottles that were about, I don't know, they weren't really large. They were maybe 10 ounces or something. They, they weren't large, but four of them for like 29 something. Uh, I had several weeks of whiskey enjoyment out of those. You know? well, there you go. So. So now that you're getting more familiar with whiskey, are you finding a flavor that you like? What I mean by that is, uh, are you getting more familiar with bourbon, scotch, or Irish? Or, or is there one that's coming out more than another for you? I think the Irish is still kind of, and it might, maybe, I just don't, I haven't done it enough like you do uh, to really distinguish, but I think the Irish stuff is the stuff I go for first, although the Canadian stuff is much cheaper for me around here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one day I want to do, I would like to be able to, Go into a liquor store, maybe when I get my tax refund or something, and buy myself a ninety-dollar bottle of whiskey just to see what a big, you know, twenty-year-old age <laughs> bottle or something would be like, you know. Uh, but I, I like the Jamesons. I like Jamesons pretty good. I've enjoyed that one, um, and uh, that's one I've, I've I, I buy the nippers on that one every now. They're like two forty-nine for a nipper bottle of that. Well, this Jameson cask mates in my neck of the woods. So this big bottle runs about thirty-five. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, that's not super cheap, but it's not crazy expensive either. But it, it gives you those Jameson notes. Plus, you've got the the addition of those stout notes, which adds. I mean, you got it just adds these fudge like notes and some some big malt characteristics that aren't typically found in regular Jameson. It's just a nice whiskey. But I'm starting to pick up some of those things that you talk about in your reviews, the caramel stuff, and and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and and you know, I've I've actually tried a few glasses of whiskey where I might put some ice in to see if there's a difference and how it opens up more, you know, when you put the white, the water or the whiskey or the, 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 
the ice in. And, you know, I've noticed it's like, yeah, I do notice a difference. I, I can't remember which review you did. You did one a month or two ago where you actually took a couple of sips on the, the whiskey straight up. And then he put some ice in it, and then he said, "Oh yeah, yeah, I noticed that you you said there, yeah, I noticed how this opens up so much more, and I I noticed that a little bit too, you know. I don't remember which one it was you were talking about though. Well, I've noticed on this Jameson cask mates, you you add a little ice, you get it chilled, uh, yeah. more of that sweetness comes out again. It's going to depend on what you're looking for if you want to drink it straight up. Straight up actually just means chilled." without ice in it, meaning that if you, if you take your whiskey, you put it in a shaker with some ice, you shake it up, and you strain it, yep. you pour it in a glass, that's straight up. If you serve it without any ice, if you just pour it straight into your glass or into a shot glass in your glass, that's neat. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, like I said, I'm learning a lot just watching you, and and we have, what, 70-something members on our Drinking Whiskey page on Facebook? And yeah, it's not a lot, but I'd rather have a small group with active members than a whole lot of members that aren't active, to be honest with you. Because it sure would be nice to it'd be nice to generate a lot more you know, members. I mean, people talking about that, and, and it's nice they post the pictures, and and uh, you know, it's kind of nice to see the different opinions people have about their, their yeah. and so on. And, you know, I mean, we're kind of an old called drinking whiskey, but... You know, scotch is okay, and I think I asked you, I sent you an email the other day about gin. You said you have that sometimes, and I have some rum sitting in. I have a glass of rum that, that someone gave me two years ago. It's from uh, the uh, Virgin Islands. And oh, yeah. Nice. Mango rum. It's a well-known name brand, and it was given to me by a friend, but I've never cracked it open. I've been meaning to. I bought myself some mango, you know, uh, soda, you know, mango uh, water, mango flavored water. And I was going to mix the two together to see how they came out, but I haven't tried that yet. So, well, we try to keep that group pretty loose. I mean, yeah, it does. It, it is called drinking whiskey, but if folks want to post gin, rum, vodka, I don't care as long as it's spirits related. I'm going to let it fly unless they go, you know, completely off the rails. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not. You know, we're not paying close attention to that stuff. We yeah. just, I just want folks that are going to be active and are enthusiastic about what they're drinking. Uh, age rums are, are have become very popular right now, so I would be, uh, I, it would be welcome to see some aged rum pictures and reviews on the site as well. I think the enthusiasm is what we encourage in, in our group, and you know we kind of formed it sort of at the last minute. I can't remember you and I were emailing back and forth one day and i was yeah it was just last minute, yeah. i can't remember what i was mumbling about I was, I was complaining about something i know that i was complaining <laughs> about something and you said how about we form a whiskey page I said, yeah sure why not <laughs> well i was just thinking you know how you know well, i think you and i both were tired of just pretentious sites uh, on either end beer or whiskey i think we just wanted to do just a, a loose side where people weren't going to complain about little things you know if yeah. you want to you know, post some whiskey pictures, you know, uh, just, you know, uh, uh, whiskey information, whatever, you know, do whatever you want. It's just, just a loose, friendly group. And that's what we wanted to do. And I think we've achieved it. Well, you know, I don't know. In New Hampshire, I'm not aware of, and you know, my, my niche is New England. I do beers, and when I do my beer reviews on YouTube, they're all New England. You know, mm -hmm. the states of New England. And I don't, again, I don't, this is me not knowing enough. But I'm not sure if there's any whiskey distillers in New England. I'm sure there must be because I know of a vodka distiller and I know of some rum distillers, but I'm not sure of a whiskey distiller and I'm hoping I'm not insulting people who are watching. I do that. But you know, I, it'd be interesting for me to, to sort of enhance my, my channel by finding a, a whiskey distiller or a scotch distiller from somewhere in the six New England states. It'd be nice to be able to get on there and, and promote that. Yeah, I, know, I know of a good vodka place over in Vermont and then here in New Hampshire, there's a place that does uh, rum, uh, which is quite good. And uh, um, there are others around. We've got a lot of wineries around as well. A couple of mead places, places that do mead. So, you know, there's, a, there's a, an array of different types of spirits uh, that are brewed here or, or distilled here in New Hampshire and New England. So, yeah. So I'm also having some beer to accompany my whiskey. As you know, Jeff, I like to do that. <laughs> I'm having, uh, actually, it's the first time I've had this. Uh, the Global Warmer from 6.7% 70 IBUs. Uh, my <laughs> wife and I and Diana and grandkids, 
took a day trip to Rogers, Arkansas yesterday, and I found this in a liquor store. Again, it's one I'd never had before, and I can't get it here in Missouri. So I think I've seen that, that one around I think I've seen that one around here, but I'm not sure if I've actually had it. We get some of those six six um, we got a few of the beers from this brewery in my area. And uh, sometimes they they always come in that what eight ounce can or whatever it is or ten ounce can or something. well the twelve ounce it says twelve ounce but they're a, a slim can but it yeah. says twelve ounce on it yeah it looks so much smaller <laughs> they do well well they're taller than a typical twelve ounce but they're very slim but it says twelve ounce on it so I don't think I've yeah, had that global, interesting can yeah I'm not sure if I've had that global warmer I've had a few beers from them and the ones I've had from them they like to hop up their beers so I've been Pretty impressed with the hopped up beers that they put out, but I'm not. I don't think I've had the global warmer. I don't think so. It doesn't jump in my mind. Well, I think, but, you know, I think this was meant to be a, a winter warmer, seven percent, but it is seventy IBUs. Uh, so there, there is still a lot of hoppage going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one thing they do. They put out a lot of the, they put a lot of hops in their beers. I've noticed um, they specialize in the hopped up beers. So, you know, and so I think that's. That's the craze right now. Of course, we all know everyone's hopping up their beers. And, uh, you know, I, I watch more beer reviews on YouTube of people who are talking about the Imperial IPAs and these hopped up IPAs and these uber hopped grapefruit and, and floral and all those sensations. And, you know, I've, I've never been a I've never disliked the style. It's just that to me, the IPA or India Pale Ale style was designed as more of a preservative. I mean, we all know the history. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. The regular hops ale that was. Are, hops are a natural preservative, as is any high ABV beer, which was also the advent of the Imperial Stout for the same reason. Yeah. And so we all know that, you know, hundreds of years ago, they, they were just basically pale ales with a lot of hops thrown in so they could bring them to India. The English could bring it to India so the troops in India would have some beer to enjoy back home and still taste reasonably the same after a week or two of of riding across you know fl you know sh sailing across the oceans is or several months but yeah. yeah yeah so and nowadays everyone says gotta have these things fresh gotta have it like it's right off right right, yeah. pour it right into the glass out of the fermenter <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pour it right then or somehow gotta be bad well you know i, I think that mentality is rather ignorant I, you know I, i've said this before and you've heard me say it uh if you're telling me that certain brewers, certain breweries are formulating beers to taste a specific way at a specific time, okay, I'll agree with that. But if you're telling me that beer is going to be bad after a week, two weeks, 30 days, or even 90 days, well, you're wrong. That beer is not going to be bad. It may not taste the same way that brewer formulated it tastes like, but it won't go bad. It can't go bad. I get a kick out of... Uh you know, those stone brews, stone drink by 1225, 2015. So what happens if I drink it on 1226? Well, the, that right there is beautiful marketing because, uh, because because what they're counting on is the weak-minded thinking, oh, my God, if I let it go, it's going to be bad. If I pop it the next day, I'm going to open it up and it's going to be dust. I know. <laughs> I'll pop it open and dust will come out of the bottle. I mean, they are really preying on the weak-minded. But here in New England – we're seeing sort of a real renaissance in uber hopped beers. I mean, everyone's heard of Hetty Topper out of Vermont, and everyone wants to be Hetty Topper. So you've got uh, Lawson's Finest Liquids out of Vermont. Here in New Hampshire, we've got the Stone Face. Uh, they're really hopped up beers. You go over to Maine, you're checking out, uh, you're getting uh, uh, Bissell Brothers and uh, Foundation. I mean, those are lovely hopped up beers. And then when you get down into Mass, for example, the Trillium and the Treehouse Breweries, they're all, they're all doing these super hopped up beers. It's the real fake craze right now. Everyone wants to be Hetty Topper. And, uh, you know, I'm one of these guys who I don't mind those kind of beers, but I'm not, I don't want to go up to a store on Monday when Hetty Topper is delivered, wait in line for a half hour, simply <laughs> give up a four-pack of Hetty Topper. You know, but there's, I, it's funny when you drive up there or any of those places that sell those beers like that, you see these people, these long lines waiting out, say, just can't wait to get that beer. The same thing happens at Treehouse down in Massachusetts. I live 90 minutes from there, and to be honest, I haven't actually actually been there. So, and, and but Treehouse is becoming one of those real sought-after beers. The stuff from Treehouse, about 90 minutes from there where I live now, and 
eventually I'm going to make a road trip down there, but I get I want to get there early enough so I don't have to wait in line too long. I don't wait for anything, man. Uh, to me, there are so many great beers that I can walk into any beer store and pick up. I don't I don't worry about the trendy stuff. I I, I think uh, things are going to sort that shit out eventually. I just uh, <laughs> I, I think beer geeks you want to believe certain things are hot at certain times. Yeah, I think you have that hipster part of of the craft beer thing that want to drive certain breweries at a certain time. I don't buy into that. There are too many great breweries out there available to me right now. For instance, right about the same time everybody was going crazy for BCBS, I mean, I was able to get into Mother's and get get the MILF Imperial Stout, that's Asian Five Barrels. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to me, the, the BCBS is overpriced and it's overhyped. It's not that great a beer, or it wasn't this year. It has been in years past, I will admit. But this year's was incredibly disappointing. I heard there that. are other barrel aged beers that are much better than anything the AB InBev can put out. Yeah. You know, I, I, I actually have one of the goose, uh, one of the BCBSs in my cellar. It was from the most recent batch. I got it back uh, right around Christmas. It's the regular stout. I heard one of the, uh, a lot of people were complaining about one of their, I forget which one, but one of them was really, had some, you know, was, it wasn't right. A lot of people were complaining about it. I forget which one it was. I don't think it's the well, one I heard I it was I the do. Barney wine, but I've also had folks <laughs> complain about, I wasn't the only one that had issues with their the Bourbon County stout either, but I, I know the Barney wine had several complaints. Yeah, but I, uh, but I, uh, I do have one in my cellar. Uh, BCBS does come to New Hampshire, but you got to get it or you miss it. It's one of those beers that if you don't get it on the day it's delivered to your favorite beer store, you're going to miss it because they only give them limited number of, of cases. <laughs> well, it's because so many people buy into that hype, Jeff, and they, they, they light up. I mean, you know, five years ago, Jeff, I could walk into any beer store in town and, and buy last year's BCBS. Yeah, yeah. And about three years ago, that hype started, and it's going to be this hipster kind of crap. That that started that. Uh, and so here here's how I came about my BCBS this year. I refused to stand in line for it. I absolutely did. So about five days after Black Friday, I happened to be in Macanoodles, and Brent, the owner, walked up to me and says, "Hey, I've got a I've got one back there if you want it." How they sold it this year was they they did one of the bottles of the BCBS, which is the 500 milliliter bottles, mm -hmm. with five other random. You know, Goose Island beer. So you got a six pack of beers with one of the BCBS for fourteen ninety eight. So I went ahead and bought it, but I only did because he walked up to me and said, "Hey, I got one if you want it." There was no way in hell I was going to stand in line for it. And to be quite frank, I was I was really hoping to love it because I love everything barrel aged, and this beer was incredibly disappointing. Mm -hmm. And I think those folks that really jumped up and loved it were buying into that hype. I think if they blind tasted that beer. They would have been disappointed too. Yeah, I'm sure they would. It's it's one of those things that you're buying the name, you're buying the label, you know, and you're buying the reputation, the past reputation. Well, I just think so many people are just like lemmings. Oh, I gotta have it, gotta have it, because everybody else does. I refuse. <laughs> maybe I'm a little, uh, <laughs> you know, but maybe uh, I don't know. I just I just refuse to buy into that hype, man. Yeah. Buy what you like. Don't let hype. Don't let hype determine what you buy. It's just ignorant. Oh, I agree. I, you know, being living where I live, uh, you know, I get a lot of people that say, "You ever had Hetty Topper?" You know, I said, "Well, I I live two hours from the nearest place I can buy it, and I have to get there on a Monday at ten a.m. if I want to buy it." <laughs> and you know, and um, but it's one of those things that uh, I get that all the time. You you know, and some of the beer stores in my area have signs on the walls: "We do not sell Hetty Topper here." And the other thing, they do not sell, we do not sell Yingling here because you can only get it, those. You can't get those in, uh, you know, in New Hampshire. <laughs> so, well, we've got New Hampshire's really, as far as beer goes, New Hampshire. And I've talked about this in my reviews. New Hampshire's really become kind of a. It's really exploding in the last four years. We've seen a huge increase in the number of small, one or two men or one or two person operations. Where they do less than two thousand barrels a year. One just opened three blocks from my home, called Oddball Brewing. I mean, that's pretty dangerous. I'm three blocks away from a brewery, you know, wow. and and they've put out some pretty halfway decent stuff so far. So, you know, 
this New Hampshire just seems to be really exploding with this stuff, and and uh, because they changed the rules, the laws about 2011 to allow for multiple licensing, self distribution, a few other things that allowed these smaller brewers to thrive. So, and um, there's a few others that I haven't even been to yet that have just opened up within the last few months. I'm hoping to get to them sometime. But it's sort of like really kind of growing in this area right now. Yeah, you either make it to your neck of the woods. I've never been out there, so one of these days I'll like to take those breweries with you. So you being in you and being in Missouri, you bum into the St. Louis Rams are moving back to Los Angeles? <laughs> no, actually quite the opposite because I grew up in California, so uh, for me, uh, the Rams were always a L.A. team. I yeah. mean, I, I had a Roman Gabriel jersey when I was four years old. So, you know, no, I'm not bumming at all. In fact, it seems like natural progression for me. I'm a little irritated with some of the St. Louis fans, though, to be honest with you, because they, they want to piss and moan about the team moving back. But uh, the team has had some struggles over the last, you know, decade or so. But – the Rams did bring St. Louis their only Super Bowl, so they ought to be damn grateful for that instead of pissing and moaning, in my opinion. Well, one day i got to get down to Missouri. It's probably, for me, it's like a 24-hour drive simply to go to a McAdoodles with you. Oh, I'd love to take you to Max, man. Uh, <laughs> but if you ever make it to my neck of the woods, we'd have to do Mother's, uh, White River Brewing Company, Springfield Brewing Company, and McAdoodles, yeah. Yeah, because uh, you're always doing those. You have a good time, yeah. One of my favorite little video reviews you do are the ones where you go out to Macadoodles and, and are sitting in there and sampling the beer with all the activity going on around you, and you're you're you know you're trying the beer of the day at Macadoodles or one of those. In fact, for you, it was kind of cool. You sort of did this for a week or so. You did these kind of dive bar, you know, uh, reviews. Which I oh yeah, was, yeah. But I mean, you got you can only go to so many places, I guess. But I was thinking I should do the same thing. <laughs> I do. You know, here's the thing, Jeff. I don't buy in anything. I mean, if I get a free day, I get a chance to do something. I'm doing a dive bar tour. Or I'm doing mags, or I'm doing something else. You know, I, I don't I don't plan. I don't script anything. Everything I do is completely off the cuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, one thing which you know which you do, and it's one of the things I don't do. When I do my reviews, I always I, I've changed a little bit over years, but you know, my I have the sort of production value I put to my videos where I put the logo on, I put I put the <laughs> ABV and stuff. It's not a lot. It's not, uh, it used to be much more. I used to be much more than that in the beginning when I first started because I just celebrated. I don't know if you watched my review yesterday. I just celebrated my sixth anniversary of doing beer reviews on YouTube, and I did it with I celebrated by opening a 2010 uh, Red Hook Treble Hook from uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And uh, so talked a little bit about, you know, being on YouTube all that time. And But I've tried to tone that down a little bit, but what you do, I, what I like, would have made it much easier is you just pop on your cell phone, stick it in the bar and start talking. I do, you know, I, I've kind of got intentionally that way. You know, so many people want to want to do production values. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think people have to be true to who they are. And, and for me, I'm, I'm kind of a no frills guy. So when I even when I do the beer videos, whiskey videos, whatever I do, it's all about just being spontaneous. Yep. I just pop it on, I throw it out there. Yeah, I, I, I always joke that I do this as low tech as humanly possible. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I switched over to the using the term NEBR instead of New England Beer Reviews, uh, now more people know me for NEBR than they know for New England Beer Reviews. And, um, and so I got that little logo that I created off a, basically off a Word document and put a little color into it, and I use it every time. And, and uh, sort of has become sort of my, my, whole, you know, my whole image, I guess you might say. <laughs> so, well, hey, Jeff, uh, what, you had any final thoughts for this particular uh, Beer Whisperer pub session? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm in, I've been slowly drinking this uh, Knob Creek, enjoying it. Um, Steelers lost, so I guess the Patriots are going to be playing the Denver Broncos next week out in Denver. <laughs> Other than that, uh, I'm just got kind of, nothing to worry about. I'm sure Peyton Manning's going to find a way to choke, too. Let's hope so. I'm a Patriots fan. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I've, I've enjoyed the chat. This is my for, I, this is my first chance to try out my new webcam. So Well, good. So we're here at the Beer Whisperer Pub, and I'm glad to be joined by Jeff Lyons today. 
from NEBR or New England Beer Reviews, whichever you prefer to call him. We're having some whiskey. We're having some beer. So, hey, thanks for joining me. And we're going to end this session of Beer Whisperer. We'll be back. All right, catch up.